The problem for electrostatic interaction between two charge conducting spheres with arbitrary electric charges and arbitrary radiuses has kept the attention of many researchers. They attempted to solve it either using very complicated methods or reached only approximate or partial results. Using the image charges method, we solved the problem in the general case for two ungrounded spheres by developing exact analytical formulas for the values of firstly, the force F of their electrostatic interaction, secondly, the potential energy W of their interaction, lastly, the potential Vm of the field at an arbitrary point M. We developed an algebraic method which allows us to overcome all technical difficulties. On figure 1, there are two ungrounded charge conducting spheres S1 and S2 respectively with charges Q1 and Q2 and radiuses R1 and R2, and R is the distance between their centers O1 and O2 in a given inertial system. As the charges Q1 and Q2 are evenly distributed in the surfaces of S1 and S2, we assume that before the interaction of the spheres they are focused in the respective centers of the spheres O1 and O2. After the electrostatic interaction between S1 and S2, we assume that the induced charges are located in the segment O1, O2 and evenly distributed on the surfaces of the sphere's charges Q1 over bar and Q2 over bar are left, which we can assume to be focused at the centers O1 and O2. Let the image charges Q1 to M-1 located in the sphere S2 be formed as a result of Q1. Similarly, let the image charges Q1 to M located in the sphere S1 be formed as a result of Q1. Analogically, we can also determine the image charges Q2 to M minus 1 and Q2 to M formed by the charge Q2. We denote the charges located in the sphere S1 with Qj prime and those located in the sphere S2 with Qj second. Their corresponding distances to the centers of the spheres we denote with Dj prime and Dj second. For the electrostatic interaction between the spheres S1 and S2, we get for the value of the force of interaction formula 10 for the potential energy of the interaction, formula 11, and for the potential at an arbitrary point M of the electrostatic field, formula 12. In these formulas, delta J prime and delta J second are, respectively, the distances dJ prime and dJ second to the centers of the spheres, divided by the distance R between the spheres. On figure 2, we have shown the graphics of the force F as a function of the distance R between the centers of the spheres with equal radiuses, which assume successfully increasing values, and different in value, fixed same type, positive or negative of charges. The graphic in red is for point charges when R1 equals R2 equals 0, i.e. for Coulomb's law. The graphics in blue from the top down are for spheres with increasing lengths of their radiuses. When the charges are of the same type, positive or negative, the Coulomb's force can only be a force of repulsion, and the real force F can be both a force of attraction and a force of repulsion, and can even assume a zero value. On figure 3, the force F as a function of R for two spheres with equal radiuses and same charges is shown. The green graphics represents the value of the force calculated using the approximate formula given by Slisko and Brito Orta. And the blue graphics represents the value of the force calculated using our exact formula. When the distances between the spheres are small enough, the deviation of the approximate value of f from the exact value is observable. As a conclusion, firstly, our method is easily applicable. Many of the results obtained by other researchers can be summarized by it. Secondly, Coulomb's law follows from formula 10 when R1 equals R2 equals 0. Moreover, the deviation of the idealized Coulomb's force from the real force F of interaction between two conducting spheres can be determined. Lastly, the method is also applicable for an arbitrary conducting solid having a single center of symmetry by reducing it to a sphere with the same surface area. We use these results in order to be able to determine the force of interaction between the nucleons within the nucleus. We'd like to thank you for your attention.